Rugby is a game in which the object is to carry the ball over the opponent's goal line and force it to the ground. Here are some examples. An individual player uses his speed and agility to carry the ball forward and score. I know, but uh, the Italians have pinched it, and the big fellas away, Bergamasco, the flank forward, oh, what a wonderful run that is. That is one of the great tries by a flank forward. Members of a team can pass the ball between themselves. Only the ball carrier can be tackled, so by passing, the target for the defender is continually changing, making tackling difficult. Notice that the ball must be passed backwards. It is illegal to pass it forward. This means that there are only two ways of moving the ball forward, by kicking or by carrying the ball. When the ball has gone out of the field of play, a line-out is formed. This groups players in two lines at right angles to the sideline. The team that wins the ball moves it from where there are many players to where there are few. Here there is space between opponents. The team can now attack these spaces going forward to score. The score is called a try. For a try, the team receives five points. It is called a try because the team can try to score two further points by kicking the ball between the goalposts after the try has been scored, giving seven points in total. In the game, stoppages occur and this results in restarts. Of the restarts, the most common are scrums and lineouts. A scrum takes place in the field of play after a minor infringement. It takes place where the infringement occurs. The team that has not infringed throws the ball in, which gives them an advantage and results in them usually winning the ball. When the ball goes out of play, it is thrown in at a lineout. The skill in line-out play is in the ability of players to leap into the air and to catch the ball, sometimes with help from teammates. As with scrums, the ball is thrown in by the team that has not infringed. For example, they are not responsible for kicking it off the playing area. As with scrums, the ball is thrown in straight between the two lines of players so that both teams have the opportunity to compete for it. Once the ball has been won, play continues around the field. Players carry the ball forward and passing backwards to each other. When they are stopped, or more precisely tackled, by opponents, their teammates get behind them and form a loose scrum, from which the ball is delivered and the attack can continue. This formation resembles a scrum, but players are not in the same position as they would be at a scrum, as this happens dynamically without the referee starting play. In this loose scrum, if the ball is on the ground, it is called a ruck, and when it is off the ground, it is called a maul. Here we see a particularly good maul. The players are bound to each other, on their feet and carrying the ball down the field before it is put on the ground for their players to step over and to continue the attack. In the game, these contests for possession, the scrum, line-out, ruck and maul, occur on many occasions. The scrum occurs when a player mishandles and knocks the ball forward, passes forward or commits a minor infringement that doesn't affect the play of opponents in a major way. Line-outs occur when the ball has gone out of play. Rucks and mauls are created voluntarily by players. They do so because they have run out of space to attack. By setting up a ruck or maul, space is created to continue the attack as the defence must stay behind the last player of their team in the ruck or maul. Once the ball has been won, the team that has it can move forward to the goal line in a variety of ways. They may run and carry the ball to the opponent's goal line. They may pass the ball, set up a ruck or maul to create space and pass to a player in a better position who can carry it down the field. There are many combinations. Here we see a line-out from which the player evades his opponents by outmanoeuvring them. The ball is then passed to a player in space who is then able to score. Here they are, some intricate moves. Oh, 
picks equals the record. The ball may also be kicked down the field, picked up, and a try scored. A real chance here for Wales. There could be a score on the way if Williams can control it. In this example, the ball is kicked over the goal line, and the attacking player beats the defender to the ball to force it to the ground, resulting in a try. Here we see an example of a try being scored after which the kicker attempts to add two further points by kicking the ball over the crossbar and between the goal posts. In doing this, a try, five points, is converted into a goal by adding the extra points. 16 stones on the hoof, a try for Ben Cohen, his seventh try for England. Johnny Wilkinson of Newcastle. Yeah, that's just a little chip kick for him, isn't it? If the ball is caught in the field of play, a player may drop kick the ball over the crossbar, resulting in three points being scored. When a player commits a serious infringement, the opposing team is awarded a penalty kick where the infringement took place. If this position is close to the goalposts, then the kicker may kick the ball from the ground over the crossbar. This is called a place kick. For this, the team receives three points. When a team is not in possession, they defend by tackling the ball carrier to the ground. To do this, move forward to deny the attacking team space, grasp the ball carrier and take the player to the ground. When a player is tackled, the ball must be played immediately, allowing players who are on their feet to compete to get hold of the ball. Oh, big tackle by Paul Tito. For Walker. Smack into... Brent Thompson, and now it's been played away, and here's an opportunity, they'll have to close Jonah down here, Lovely. and he'll go all the way, oh, and he's got three men outside him. As the ball must be forced on the ground over the goal line to score a try, the tackle can be used to prevent this from happening. Got it again. Other ways of regaining possession are upended. by picking up the ball that has been dropped by the opposition. Stringer comes loose by uh, Agara now. By forcing a player this. over the touchline. This gives the tackling team the throw in at the line out. An accurate throw can lead to the team regaining possession. By, by a minor infringement such as a knock on. This results in a scrum being awarded with the throw-in going to the non-offending team. By catching the ball when an opponent kicks it, possession of the ball is also regained from a high kick. And he's a big strong fella. Stimson tackled on his own 10 metres line. Lovely hoof by Austin Healy who was a bit doubtful for this match. By grabbing the ball when the opposition loses control of it. In comes Burnout Sales. The game starts with a kickoff in which the kicking team must remain behind the halfway line and move forward as the ball is kicked to the opposition, who must be at least 10 metres back from the line. John Hill stands his ground. If the kickoff is shallow, this usually results in a ruck being formed from which play continues. The restart may also occur at the 22 metre line. Here, the ball need not go 10 metres, but it must cross the line. Kickoffs may be shallow, so a team has the opportunity to regain possession as the height of the ball gives players time to contest it. Both kicks may be long, from which they chase and try to prevent the opposition from moving forward. Fans will use that to build themselves up. Just thinking, publishers around the world will breathe a sigh of relief. It will 